record to the cloud. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and begin. First of all, thank you everyone who is joining today, joining live or joining later on, wherever you are in the quantum field. Um, I just want to take a moment to appreciate you and send you a warm welcome because it's obviously a lot more fun when we come together live and then we like really actually feel um, the activations that are happening by coming together. So um, let's see. So yeah, what I was just saying is so I looked up the meaning of energy and, and meant power. And so I was thinking about like, okay, what are we powered by? We're powered by source. So essentially energy is like our, our battery, like what we run off of. So just like we were saying a little bit ago, it's like energy, um, like when you're feeling really tired, it's like you're feeling low power. And then at that point you have the choice to transmute it. So you can, you know, drink something if, if you're not super sensitive to caffeine or step outside, maybe ground with the earth, take in some of those positive ions from the earth, or actually I think they're negative ions because they're recharging us. Um, but yeah, it's essentially like energy is what allows us to be alive and allows us to function in the here and now. And so it's super important that we know how to direct our own energy and how to have control over our energy, because there are so many things that strive to take our energy away from us and disempower us in order to essentially um, feed off of us. Can everyone um, mute their mic? Just hearing a little bit of feedback. Okay, so um, yeah, and so I was thinking about how obviously like according to the law of physics, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Like it just exists. There's already an abundance of energy around us at all times. And if we could see through the air, essentially, you would be able to see energy just floating all around us. But obviously, we can't see that. And it might even be a blessing in disguise. because I don't think we want to be so distracted in our daily lives with so much commotion going on in the um, ethers. And so it takes more force to stop energy than it does to direct it. So that's why we're doing this whole workshop, right? We're learning how to direct our energy so that way we can have our energy work for us. And so we can really channel our energy into things that um, support us and things that feed us back. So in a way, energy is kind of like a food. So it's almost like a, a feedback loop of like, you put in this energy and you get something back. And so we're essentially um, in this symbiotic relationship with the world around us. And what happens when you feel disempowered is that we're essentially allowing like a piece of our energy to live outside of us. And so that's when we usually feel like really down, you might feel sad, um, you might, might just feed into some of those lower feelings. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. So I want to actually break down everything. Like we'll go through a little bit of an intro. I want to also do a prayer in just a moment, but I want to break down everything into time. So energy exists like all the time, you know, and we're multidimensional. So it exists in the past, in the present and in the future. And even in just one moment, you could be, you know, grounded into the present. You could be thinking about the past and you could be creating something for your future. So we're constantly playing on all these levels. And so it's important to really learn where our energy is going. So that way we bring that awareness in. Cause then at that point we can choose where the uh, energy is going. So let's actually go ahead and dive right into the prayer. So if everybody can just maybe roll their shoulders back a few times, just open up through the heart space, lift your spirits, lift your spine, just like ground down into the surface that you're sitting in and go ahead and close your eyes. Hmm, just start to bring some of your awareness into your breathing and into your present state as you sit here right now. Just becoming the observer of your thoughts and bringing your attention back to your breath. Hmm. 
So I call on Mother, Father, God, Holy Spirit, the holy essence that binds us all. Please shield us in your protective armor and allow any entities to be removed. Anything that does not serve our highest good or purpose, please go ahead and leave now. Please allow us to remain calm, clear, and coherent throughout this workshop. Allow anything inorganic to fall out of our fields, whether that's conscious or subconscious. Please wipe and clear any draining or stagnant energy that surrounds us. Thank you for guiding us through this time together. Thank you for allowing it to be possible for us to hop on a call in live time or in the future, whenever you're tuning in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hmm, okay, so you can go ahead and open up your eyes again. So. I always like to start every session that I do with a little bit of a prayer just to whoosh, clear anything that's not, you know, in our highest order. So I want to talk a bit about currency and energy being currency. So I did mention a little bit about energy being food. So there's obviously in every story you know there's there's the light and the dark there's the hero and the bad guy there's always like a opposing force and so when you break it down to energy it's not really like one is bad or one is good it's just that there's one that is organic that is producing i mean i guess i shouldn't say producing energy since we're not really producing it it's just that we're flowing with it you know we're using the energy to create things we're using our energy to to do good in the world. And some of these other beings, these inorganic ones, you can call them, it's a different kind of energy. It's an energy that wants to take. So it wants to steal that, that nice essence that we've been gifted. Like I said, we're powered by source. So we're constantly receiving um, light codes, whether that be through the sun, through prayer, through meditation, through our daily practices, just from, you know, being, being a good person, we're receiving this light. And so we remain in that balance with the creator. And there are these beings or people even who have, you know, cut themselves off from that source. So you see this a lot in, in people who might be like mentally um, unwell. Maybe they've just lost uh, track of, you know, the, the love in the world, light, like whatever you want to call it. Like they've kind of just disconnected themselves. And so in order to survive, they need to receive something from outside of themselves. For me personally, this started really showing up at my old job when I first was like waking up to all this energy and stuff. I would talk to people who would literally talk my ear off and just like, like where I couldn't even get a say in the conversation, they would just steer the whole conversation and being an empath or sensitive or whatever um, identity you want to throw in there, whatever title, I would get like pulled into these conversations. And at the end, like, it would be so hard for me to even open my eyes because they would have drained me of my energy. So if you've ever been in this situation, um, yeah, you know, it's, it doesn't feel good. And that's obviously just like in the physical plane, but it can happen in the astral. It can happen um, just, yeah, Kate, definitely. Um, but yeah, it can happen on like so many different levels. And so it's really up to us to have that awareness and have our boundaries set whenever we engage with anyone really, even if it's our partner, like they could be, you know, having an off day and they kind of like want to, want to leech onto your essence, your power, your energy in order to like, you know, coast or whatever. And so we really have to get good at recognizing what's our energy and what's somebody else's. And the moment we feel like our energy is actually feeding someone else, we need to, you know, call our energy back. And we'll, we'll talk about that more too. 
So these entities, um, I don't want to give them any power just because I know there's a lot of talk in the spiritual world of like, oh, like, and I mean, I talk about it a lot too, like demons and um, just negative beings who want to siphon and, and all that kind of stuff. And it definitely does exist. But if you break it down, I mean, it's, it's just an energy that is um, more used to leaching than it is creating because it can't create its own energy. It's not collected it's not connected to the source um and so this is where mind control can come in so if you have any leaks in the energy field if you have any holes in the energy field this is where you know one of those things can just come in and it can come in, in through your mind like this stuff is very advanced technology at this point um, back in the day, probably like, you know, some, some robber would come out of the corner and like scare you and steal your money or something like that. Um, but since energy is the real currency, these beings are, are essentially invisible, like, and they can come through in your, in your mind and nothing to fear. We're obviously going to go through how to protect yourself against that. Um, but when they, when they come through it's important once again to recognize that it's not yours and what that essentially means is when you think about like let's say close your eyes and think about a time that you were like really really happy where things just like made sense and everything felt very clear and when you tap into that consciousness like you start to feel like the gratitude come in for whoever or whatever made you feel this way and you start to really tune into who you are as an essence like as an essence we are love and so really feel into this and how do you think guilt shame doubt like any of those things like they just don't belong in that space and so these essentially are our demonic uh, mind control programs that are coming through so it doesn't need to be super deep, you know, it could, it could be as easy as like walking into the grocery store and someone says, ew, like you're ugly or something. Like, I don't know, you know, I mean, I hope nobody would just say that right off the bat or whatever, but it could just be like something like so simple. And if you have already like a wound from the past and we're about to get into the past, um, that's where it can really like pull you in and you can start to believe these things. You'll start to believe, oh my gosh, like. I, I am so, um, so ugly. Yeah, Janina, or they can just think it at you. Like it's, it's literally like they're sending um, warfare at you. Like they'll think certain thoughts. And if you don't have your protection up later on, you might feel a little weird. You might start to like think weird thoughts when something happens. And um, when that trigger comes up, you know, normally we're like so zoomed into it. And that's, kind of what happened with me with my spiritual attack that I had last night like I got so zoomed in that I was like like it changed my entire reality and I started seeing things through that lens and and it was hard to pull myself out until today so um before we dive into the past I wanted to just mention that first and foremost before anything we are spiritual emotional beings so we that is that is our primary so we are eternal we are eternal life eternal life is floating through us and um sorry i lost my train of thought there so we are spiritual emotional beings so whenever something happens to us on the physical that's usually a symptom of where we are spiritually i read this book years ago actually sparked uh, my energy awakening and it was called the celestine prophecy let me know if you've read it before. It's such a good book. But in Celestine Prophecy, they talk about how injuries are not on accident. Like nothing is by accident. It's what you're allowing to come into um, your existence. So they say like hip injuries, you know, related to your, your heart space. They say um, knee injuries related to something else. You know, you can look into what each injury means. But being able to, to know that that's not happening on accident, like you didn't just trip and fall and, and break your ankle on accident, like it was something that was already happening on a spiritual emotional level. And knowing that we are also eternal. So a lot of like what's happening even right now in the mainstream is there's there's been this big push for 
you know, safety and, and getting healthy by getting, you know what? And so they're, they're pitching these things, um, even though these are outside of ourselves, but they're, they're feeding that fear of people like pulling on those heartstrings of you can die and, you know, you can, you can lose your health when all that is in our own control. It's just a matter of like, you know, being spiritually um, hygienic enough, you know, and spiritual hygiene is a huge one too. Um, it's, it's really the key. So yeah. And, and I mean, when we die, it's not that we like, you know, just like our, our physical body's dead and like, we don't exist anymore. Like something else comes through or whatever, like we're completely dead. It's, I mean, I mean, there's so many studies on this too, and just so many ancient teachings. Um, but we don't really die. We kind of just like transform energy and our soul lives on and, and goes somewhere else. So whether it comes back to earth or whether it goes to a different dimension or different planet, whatever, um, that's like a little too high level for our workshop right now. But just know that like, unless you're, you're doing some, I don't know, like, I don't want to get too into like spiritual, like what is the meaning of death and um, do you like call in death or whatever? Cause that's a little dark, but anyways, so um, let's move on from that. So I want us to once again, close our eyes. And um, so throughout this workshop, you'll find we're going to be doing some, some little exercises. So go ahead and close your eyes, come back to that breathing again, just to ground yourself. And keep your posture nice and upright and start to imagine your energy field that surrounds you. So your energy field is, is all around you. You can call it your aura. You can call it your eighth chakra. It's basically just the space that surrounds your physical body. And the space holds things that are coming up in our lives. So maybe it's like something that you have going on tomorrow maybe it's a memory from yesterday maybe it's a show that you just watched maybe it's a person that's in your life maybe it's a scent a scent or an animal just kind of check in and see see what's happening so this is your energy field and you can tap into your energy field at any time super easy, super simple. You don't even really need to be like good at visualization. It's almost like just drawing this picture outside of yourself and just breathing and staying present with it and allowing your, your intuition to guide you to what is coming up. Just breathe into this, just become aware, observe, no need to judge anything. Just observe what's coming up. And you can go ahead and open your eyes. So did anybody have anything in their field that is um, something that happened like a long time ago? Maybe it happened like a few days ago, but anything that's kind of in the past, rooted in the past that's coming up in your field? Mm. yeah Kate I feel you yeah so could be like like anything really so when we think about the past we could it could be anything once again but obviously the things that hold more of a sting are the ones that stay with us the longest so anytime we've experienced any kind of pain um, emotional pain, any kind of um, trauma, betrayal, any kind of like self-sabotage or anything leading to like people pleasing, heartbreak, anger, like basically all of these things can fragment us because if they're constantly showing up in our in our field, that means that they're like a part of our energy is like linked to these things that happened before. So how can we really come into fullness and wholeness and act 
fully and like, create fully from where we are now, if our consciousness and our energy is still hooked onto something that happened maybe 20 years ago, maybe five days ago, like whatever it is, it could still be lingering on. And so this is how our energy field communicates with us. And this is exactly why it's important for us to take the time. Yeah, the hips hold so much. Hips have so much emotional energy tied to them. Um, in yoga, we always say like, you know, just, just breathe through it. If like anything comes up when you're in pigeon pose or anything like that. Um, yeah, it, it could definitely be storing something. They say shoulder injuries lead to holding weight of the world. Yeah. I, I totally believe that. Or even like when you see people with like very hunched shoulders, I've gotten so good at like reading body language just from like knowing just little bits and pieces of how energy works. Cause like you'll see someone's energy and they're like this. And it's like, they're not really like leading with their heart. They're not open. They're, they're very like, you know, like drained, like they're carrying this heavy weight of the world on their shoulders. And these are teachers for us. Like these you know, we've, we've been taught to fall into this victim victimhood of what's happened in our past. And trust me, this does not go to water down anything that's happened in any of our past because it's very real and there are real emotions there. And there's, there's real like, you know, energetic healing work that has to take place in order for us to really break those down into small um, bite-sized pieces in order for us to be able to like fully clear it. And of course it takes time. So what might be showing up today that happened 20 years ago is not going to be as strong as it was 15 years ago, but it's still going to be like, you know, it's, it's still holding some of that energy. So there's still some power there that you can reclaim and bring back to your present state. So the true alchemy is being able to transmute these things. So being able to see them for what they are and having the presence to like tune in so many times. I mean, in spiritual teachings, it's like, Oh, read this book or, Oh, like go listen to this meditation or um, go to this yoga class or go to this, like whatever class, you know, like it's so much of like, go here and do this. But really like the healing is inside of all of us and it's, it's in, in this vessel. And so being able to pause and reflect and face these things. And I know that's probably the biggest one of all is being able to face them because some of these things that could have happened to us are so traumatic that we just store them somewhere and, and we just don't ever want to think about them until someday something triggers us. And there's that trigger again, right? There's that teacher. So when we get triggered, it's important to see those triggers as little blessings from the universe to show you where you have something holding on. And I notice that anytime I clear a trigger and then it comes up again, it's like a test. And so at that point, it's like the alchemist comes through. Do I want to feed my energy to this trigger or do I am I, am I actually going to prove to myself that I have healed from it and that I can, um, release it for what it is and just observe it and not let it pull on my energy at all. So yeah, it's, um, a lot of these like mental, I was thinking about it and I feel like the past is very mental because it's, it's a lot of like memories. It's a lot of like things someone said to you that like stung and then they just like stick with you. And, um, it's, yeah, that's where the work is to, to really watch your thoughts throughout the day and like watch if there's any like loops coming through. Cause when that happens, obviously that's a sign that, um, there's something still like pulling back on you. So being able to have that practice and, um, I have a toolkit for each section. So for the past, um, the toolkit is to command your power bag. And this one is so simple, but so effective. I do this one when I'm driving. So you can just be like, you know, sitting, doing whatever, and just, just send your consciousness into your energy field and just tap into where your energy is going. So maybe it's the end of a long day and you, um, got in a car accident and someone like said something rude to you and then maybe you failed a test and maybe this happened or whatever, you know, like there's all these 
things in your field. So at the end of the day, being able to go through each one of those, just follow your day and just call your energy back and just visualize like if you want to close your eyes, even while doing this is just like, take your energy back and just say, I call my energy back. I call my energy back. I call my energy back. And the more you do this, the more you just feel, um, you, you just feel full and you, you definitely notice the shift. It's just a matter of course of getting past that mind control that might just be like so deep in that that guilt or that shame or whatever it might be like those lower negative emotions that want to pull you in deeper they're like see this happened now you you have to be depressed right because you got in this car accident so like you better be depressed and so they they are they're trying to pull you in so the moment you can like depersonalize that situation and see it for what it is and just be like you know what I got in this car accident like my car is totaled but you know I'm alive or you know I mean hopefully like you're okay obviously but but being able to come back to to that place and like take back all your all your energy so that you're not just like dedicating and, and feeding your energy to this this broken finite system that's there to steal the energy so yeah super super easy just claiming claiming your power back um yeah so do that one as often as you need and somebody asked me about spiritual or psychic attacks like how can you tell when something um when something is that and i would say it's just anything that like happens it's essentially happening on a shadow level so anything that once again is not part of that love frequency like that which you fully are um that like happiness that radiance that inner essence that just wants to create and shine through and like doesn't care about what anybody thinks you know like like that is who we really are um but all these different filters that come through throughout our, our programming our conditioning just how how we've grown up have really like put these films over so i would say something that like you haven't cleared or like felt yet fully like those will come through as spiritual attacks and they they will, they will pull you in. So just kind of how we were talking about with that example, that's pretty much what that is. And for me, it, it really helps to depersonalize and to just be like, well, that's what's happening. And um, it's, it's not me, it's, it's an entity or a, an energy that's trying to take my energy. And so that in itself helps me remove some of that you know, that heartbreak or whatever, the shame or the guilt, like any of that stuff that feels like so heavy, just being able to see it. I was like, this was a test and I failed, but it's fine because I can still take my energy back. That's what I had to do. I had to really face myself when I went through my um, little attack last night, like a few hours ago, even I was like, where is this coming from? I really had to take a look at it. And I realized there's a lot of self-judgment that I'm still processing and I think a lot of us are still processing this it's just part of you know growing through this life together and and um taking our power back and so that's still some some place where I have you know a little bit of a wound and so now that I'm aware of it next time when it happens I can I can catch it that much quicker when you say an attack, what was going on with you? Yeah, so I, I'm open books. So I don't mind sharing. So um, I essentially, I, it's so funny. So I have a friend who's also in the healing space and she um, has been, uh, like she just started her offerings like a couple weeks ago. And we were like chatting about it yesterday morning. And she told me how um, her, her offering is like doing really well. She's like fully booked out for the next few months. And I was like, oh my gosh, like fully booked out. And I was super happy for her in the moment. I was like, oh my gosh, like congratulations on your abundance. Like that's amazing. Um, Cause obviously when you're happy for someone else, it's like you're being happy for yourself. So you're telling the universe like, yeah, like I'm attracting this too. And later in the day, I don't even know like what exactly triggered it, but I guess I was just like getting tired because it was just 
later in the day. And so I started thinking about that. And I was like, wow, like she's fully booked out. And I was like, why am I not fully booked out? Like, what's wrong with me? And so I was comparing myself to her and, and and it it just took me down this deep rabbit hole where I was thinking, oh, like I'm, maybe I'm just not meant to be a healer. And like, it was just taking me down this whole road. And then when I came back, yeah, comparison is the thief of joy. And it's like so crazy because like that little comparison, like took me down this whole path. And of course it was a full moon. So I'm sure that intensified those shallow waters that I was feeling into. And so instead of just being like, oh, I'm comparing, oh, well, like my time will come like end of story, you know, like I fed the story and I was like, oh my gosh. And so my energy got drained and it went into the story and it became this big blown out thing where I was like, you know, exactly yeah she's just comparing or reflecting to me what's possible and that's so true and being being clear and level-headed now like I can totally see that that's obviously what it is because then when you see somebody else paving the way forward when you see someone else doing it then you can be like oh my gosh like get it and I'm gonna get it too Uh, but of course when you're in that lower level of emotional feelings you can totally get get trapped into that so that happened to me and here I am live to tell the tale so (laughs) glad we made it out of that so let's move on to the present and when I was thinking about the present too the present is very physical it's not mental like the past because it's it's all here like it's tangible you can like touch your water bottle in this moment you can feel the water enter your your mouth, go down your throat, like, you know, you're, you're communing with life. And so this is where the true test is to be able to lead with the heart. Cause I think the heart is exactly, they call it like the inner generator. So our heart is where we generate our, our energy essentially. And our heart is what feeds the um the aura with our energy and so when our heart is super strong our aura actually radiates like i believe it's like six feet out and so this is when i'm sure you've noticed like you walk into a room and like everyone looks at you everyone notices you like your energy is so uh magnetic or maybe you've seen somebody else do that and that's that's you know like like being in your power like being in your essence your heart is leading the way you're you're grounded in the moment and so the toolkit for for this one is just becoming more physical like moving the body so of course a lot of our work nowadays is behind a computer um, which is very mental, of course, because you're not really moving your body when you're just sitting behind a computer, you're just like processing, processing, you know? So being able to um, just become more physical in your world, stretch, take breaks throughout the day to stretch if you are working behind a computer um, and clearing the physical space. So even like cleaning the house, like obviously we don't even, like we, we know it makes us feel good, but oftentimes we don't really want to do the chores and stuff but sometimes that's the exact thing that we actually need to um, be more in the physical and like take our power back and just be interacting with our world so yeah living and leading from the heart I know it sounds pretty cheesy and kind of out there so what does that mean so once again the whole inner generator thing and and the aura, Um, our heart has like its own consciousness. So when we lead with the heart, the heart is the one that's sending our, our, uh, our energy in throughout our body and then outwards too. And our, our aura is also our main defense. So when we're in the heart and someone says something hateful towards you, you know, using that same scenario, the grocery store and someone says you're ugly or even thinks it, you, it's not even going to penetrate your field because you're, you're coming from a place where like, you don't see any of that stuff anymore. You're, you're only in that love frequency where you love yourself, you love others, you're in this like constant communion with the present. And so you, you're already feeling very, um, 
very protected as it is. Usually this means you're, you're also connected to source or whatever. So, you know, just having that, that higher level connection. So for the toolkit um, with the anchors, like your posture, your breathing, relaxing your nervous system, these are a few things that will really help get you super in the present. Because when you feel like super relaxed, you know, you're present with your breath, you're, you're kind of zoomed out from the mind, you're really in the body. And so the energy field is just like moving and, and breathing with you. Nothing is, is getting stagnant because you're, you're anchored. So I always think like being in the physical plane is like you're just a bridge between the heavens and the earth. So being in the present really is um, bringing both of those things together into, into your body. So that's where also where embodiment comes from. And I saw someone post this too yesterday where it was like the meaning of embodiment is to be in your body. And that makes so much sense, obviously. I mean, the word body is in it. So I think we all already knew that. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's all I'll say on the present. And maybe we can do a little exercise too if you guys want to just like once again like maybe move around a little bit maybe reach your arms up and over gather all this new positive energy and bring it down to your heart center let's do that again so inhaling as you bring your arms up maybe you gaze up keep the spine nice and tall and then exhale bring your hands back to your heart and last time, let's inhale all the way up, power of three, and exhale, bring your hands over to your heart. Now, I recently learned that this, this space right here, like where your, your breastbone is, that's your, where your thymus gland is. So as you inhale, tap on your thymus, and then exhale, let it go. Inhale, tap on the thymus. So this ignites your own energy. So it's kind of like waking up your heart, telling your heart, come on, wake up, come on live, come online. And just generating more of that essence. And this directly feeds your aura. So we think the aura extends out like through our head or, or through our feet and goes around, but it actually comes out through our heart and goes all around us. So tapping into the heart just really helps clear the field and also just charge up the field with your own essence. Maybe try this sometime if you're feeling tired and you need a little pick me up in the afternoon. Try, try just tapping as you're inhaling. I've only really done it for a few minutes at a time, but I feel like if you do it for like five, 10 minutes, like I'm sure you're just gonna like completely change the way you feel. Okay, so let's move away from the present and into the future. Ooh, so thinking about past, present, future. So past is very mental. So that's where like a lot of these triggers can arise um, that pull on our consciousness, on our energy field. Present is being, being in the physical and, and living from the heart and future is the, the quantum energy that exists all around us that you can pull in to create from. So I was thinking future is related to your sex organs because your sex organs are essentially creative. They're, they're where creation begins. And this is why I think sex and innocence is so heavily targeted in our world through the media, through like, you know, clothing, through so many different ways, like how they would always tell us in school, like, oh, sex sells. So like marketing is always like sex appeal and stuff like that. Cause it's, it's essentially pulling on that sexual energy. And so if you're not very like grounded and stable in your, in your own energy, then your creative essence is going to other things. And um, I know this has been a hot topic in the spiritual community, but the whole thing with porn, yeah, Alex said sex is truly a sacred energy exchange. It really is. And so if you're 
doing that sacred act by like watching porn who do you think you're feeding like you're not you're not creating your own life like you're essentially creating more of just this phantom energy that that is essentially there to pull you in so it's very creepy does anybody know about the octopus i don't even want to get into it because this shit is like literally asking for for spiritual attacks um because anyone i know who's talked about it has been like um yeah says that they've been attacked but it's essentially just this energy um that exists that feeds on our sexual energy when it's not um when it's not like used for our own purposes so our sexual energy is something that you know the creator gave us so that we can create we can create life um we can create like new worlds you know if you like really channel your sexual energy into your creations it doesn't have to be like you know sexual but in essence it it is sexual because sex equals like taking something and, and turning it into like something different or you know um or creating creating life from it so whether that's like your conversations or uh things that you're you're creating artistically um things that you're speaking um once again or things that you're like creating with your hands or even just the sacred act of like creating life making babies like all of that is so sacred and so it's very targeted and you'll see a lot of these communities that that target this also target other things um that that become addictive so there's a lot of like you know alcohol um addiction drug addiction um like even take cocaine for example like cocaine is such an addictive drug and so many people do it these days and it's literally like taking you out and like bringing you to your mind but actually like distorting your like it's just it's so bad but um even even sugar too or like casual sex like all these are like addictions that we are taking energy from our future self so when we partake in these things let's say you're um you're at a party using that cocaine example and you're like someone offers you and you're like oh okay sure like let me do some and then you end up like not being able to sleep that night because you're like so wired and then the, speaking from personal experience I've been through this life unfortunately but um and then the next day you're just like drained and and your your body is just like ugh, like you just feel gross you know so it's like you stole from your future self's quanta you you made a decision that altered your timeline so instead of you know being being strong and secure in yourself and, and being present leading with the heart all these things you essentially subconsciously told yourself that this substance is more important than having your energy field be clean and and being in charge of your your own energy and those are obviously um not like addictions are like very not to be taken light because there's obviously other traumas that could be behind that um other things that are pulling you in so it's not necessarily to say that like Oh if you like have an addiction it's because um you like don't care about your energy field like no obviously there there's deeper um traumatic wounds that are are causing you to go to that addiction because you're experiencing some level of numbness or some level of um support by engaging in that so for the toolkit on the future self Let's let's do this one as another exercise. So once again, maybe like roll your shoulders back, open up the energy field. This is like literally how I work all day. Like if I'm behind a computer, I have to take like a million breaks cuz I my body just starts to like, you know, feel feel drained. So go ahead and close your eyes just keep your hands down on your knees actually let's bring our hands together just generate some heat first this is another way to um give yourself energy work so you don't need to get a reiki certification or get anything you just really need to um pull your own energy in 
generate some heat, like bring some sensitivity into your hands and then go ahead and release your hands um, over to your body. So if you're sitting crisscross applesauce, maybe bring them on your knees. Um, maybe you can bring like your left hand to your heart, your right hand to your belly. Just tune into what feels right for you in this moment. And bring your awareness to your mind's eye or your first eye. They say it's our third eye, but it's actually our first eye is more important than our other two because we can see past, present, and or maybe, yeah, we can we can see energy. We can just receive more sensitivity through our first eye. So relax your forehead. And even if you have any trouble visualizing, just, just imagine, try, try your best to just imagine what comes up. So think about your creative energy. What are you creating in your life now? What are you working towards on the daily? What are you moving towards? What would you like to call in? And just allow for any images and colors and words, anything to just arise. And just continue breathing through this, keeping your energy field nice and fluid and alive through the power of our breath. And ask yourself, are these images or these ideas, is this vision aligned with who I am today? Or is it maybe linked to a past self? Do I still want these things that are coming up? And Ask yourself why you want these. Dig a little deeper. Of course, this could be a way longer exercise. So we'll just finish it up. Just take, take a peek at anything else that's showing up to you in this moment. Maybe it's the way you see yourself that wants to shift. Maybe it's your environment that wants to shift. Just get a little bit clearer on what that looks like for you. Hmm. And then let's gather up this energy once again, taking our arms out and up, stretching out through the spine. And exhale, just shake your hands out. So just to check in, this uh, visualization, it could be easy, it could be like, you know, second nature to you if you already do a lot of this work, or it might be a little challenging to know, like, what is it that I want? And I think that when we're operating like super clear and, and we're, we're really like in that state of flow with our energy field and we feel open and we're leading with the heart and all this stuff, we are channeling source energy. Like we're connected to source and source is flowing through us. So whatever we want is, is according to God's plan, creator's plan, Holy Mother, Holy Father, Holy Spirit, the universe, spirit, whatever you, you believe in, like that's, that's the energy that is essentially birthing through you. So if you have trouble with it, I would invite you to write a letter to God or maybe um, just, just surrender to, to source. Just see like, what, is, what does God want me to do? Like, what is my mission? And your mission can change over time, of course, can change from day to day even. But when we sit down and we really like open up that space to allow source to guide us, 
then we remain in that constant flow of energy where we're creating and we're being um we're being cared for i learned something the other day from this herbalist class that i went to and they said the healer or what did they say they said take care of others and you will always be taken care of and it's like ain't that the truth because we are here to be our eternal selves and our multi-dimensional selves and we're here to ground in more of this love and more of this light like this is our essence this is who we are and it shows up differently for every one of us so the more we get to know ourselves on a deeper level yes we're here to ground in heaven on earth yes yeah, so the more that we we bring more of this essence through then the more you know our energy field strengthens and i definitely believe that a person whose energy field is strong is 500 times more powerful maybe even thousands of times more powerful than than a person who um doesn't do this work to to open up their energy field to protect their energy field to make sure that their energy is clean and clear and that they're directing it forward into what they want to create so the more of us that start to awaken the more of us that you know start to walk this path and let our hearts lead the way and connect to source and do the work of like facing those traumatic experiences and those those parasitic thoughts that come through then the more we can you know, like gather, gather in circles, the more that we can bring other people in um, and essentially ignite and ripple through the fields to allow this work to really like penetrate and create even more change. So I know that everyone that's on here is already doing this work to some extent, but I appreciate you all for being here and for sitting in this space with me and, and being open to receiving this information and hopefully learn something new today or at least uh, grounded in more of what you were meant to receive. Um, yeah, it is amazing to, to see like the people that you attract when you do this work because they're, they're coming to you for a reason, right? Like they're ready to be activated and and the more that we just remain in that flow, then the more we're taken care of and, and the more we can actually make a change on this planet against, you know, the, the negative entities that want to steal our joy and steal our, our power and our energy. We can always take it back. And it's really so much simpler than, than we're meant, made to believe. We think that something outside of us and we have to go through like a million courses and, and all these different like levels of ourselves but really it's just about taking taking back your power in the moment so when that trigger comes up bam okay so um it is just about that one hour mark i guess i timed it perfectly so does anybody have any questions that they want to go over you're welcome to unmute yourself or type in the chat just uh, opening up the conversation for us to, you know, magnify some of these codes and maybe weave in some new, new ideas. Oh, I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Amazing. <sighs> Grounding. Yeah. Oh. I just wanted to say thank you for hosting this. I definitely uh, learned some things today. So it's just been great to, whenever you share the space with other people who are in a similar uh, line of work or just in more alignment, you definitely feel it a lot more. So thank you. Yeah, of course. You're so welcome. Thank you for being here too. That conversation we had last week, like really fired me up because we were, we were starting to get the conversation going on a lot of these. And, it's like really it's definitely just, fired me up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's really like it comes down to simplifying spirituality. <laughs> it's like taking it from these like high level concepts of like you have to do X, Y, and Z to like bring it down to like it's it's just energy and everything is energy. Everything's energy. It's like Nikola Tesla mm -hmm. said, if you ever want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration, right? Oh like, yes. Everything is just like 
the program and the system makes things to be so much more difficult when when truly in reality things are meant to be simple you know this life is meant yeah. to be just full of joy and fun and love and higher mm -hmm. frequency and when we lower our our own vibration that's when things become difficult and we create problems in our life out of nothing so mm -hmm. just to simplify yeah. and just be and yeah it's yeah. been great exactly it's like we we allow for these things to to take our control because we're like giving it to them and, and to take our power and so really it's just like it's it's so simple it's like feed the organic and stay organic and uh, <laughs> don't feed the phantom <laughs> so um thank you for saying that though it, it's like it literally like comes full circle and Christina said, um, how do you know the difference between fantasizing or daydreaming and visualizing, like actually putting it into action? Yeah, it's not a new question, but so they're all the same thing, like literally. So goes into that whole complexity issue of like these gurus and people telling you that it's like, oh, it has to be done this certain way. It's really just whatever makes sense to you. And each one of us has different artistic abilities and different gifts that shine through in their own ways. So being able to really tap into what it means like for you, like when you're daydreaming, you're essentially um, creating more of that energy that you're, you're daydreaming about. So if you're daydreaming about like something fun and like something cool, then, then you're essentially like inviting that into your current experience um but obviously if you're daydreaming aka worrying about something that is yet to come or something whatever then then you're actually just um creating this anxiety and obviously other stuff for yourself and that in itself is like a parasitic thought but yeah so anything that that makes sense to you like just seeing seeing things feeling things like that's that's energy right there and that's um that's you calling it in okay does anybody have any other questions this is so cool i feel like we need to do this more often to just even like come on and just chat Hold yeah, space for one there. another that that's definitely what I want to do actually. It's just like, cause I'm, I'm moving back from Costa, uh, from Costa Rica in like a couple of days. Right. Back oh, you are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a long story, but honestly, me and my, me and my divine counterpart, are just like, we realize we need just a little more structure right now. Um, just in our lives. And, and even in the work that we're both doing, it's like, and it's kind of a question that I had because, you know, in our line of work, it's, it's, it's hard to justify charging someone for money uh -huh. right because we live in this in this world that truly revolves around money right but i always look at it as like an, an energy exchange right it's like mm -hmm. you know energy is the highest form of currency and time is the most valuable asset that's what i've just been trying to remind myself more and mm -hmm. like it was interesting because i was in a live that i hopped on with a, another friend super super awake and um she like can, is able to tap into your like higher self and stuff like Whoa. that and like get guidance and like downloads and stuff and like one of the things that really had resonance with me is just like because I had the question I was like so how can I awaken because like my mission is like to help awaken other divine masculines right like to help mm -hmm. to help man reclaim his inner kingdom so that he can transform his outer world that's really what my my purpose and my mission is um, yeah. that I've truly like discovered but you know, one of the questions was like, how can I help awaken other divine masculines? Right. And basically it was, I kind of had a reality check, but also like, this is something that I've been feeling. And like the previous day I had a discussion with jazz, my, my, my partner. And like, it was just like, I need to tap more into my own space first and like my own, mm -hmm. like divine feminine and, and that source and that practice and do that more. And then like, as I do that more and consistently do that and not give my energy away, so to speak. Cause I, I think as like, um empaths you know like we want to like just help and we want to heal right but we have to mm. do that work even more so ourselves even if we have done the work we have to continue mm -hmm. doing it 
And, yeah. you know, as within, so without, you know, the more that we do that work and have that practice and devote that time to ourselves, the more that that's reflected and, and people, the right people will find that and they'll feel that and, and they will gravitate yeah. to you and energy mm-hmm. and money won't even matter. Right. So, yeah. You know. And it comes back to that intention too. It's like maybe being in Costa Rica too, like, you don't, necessarily have like the the like-minded community like I mean I don't know how it is no it's true where you are it is true like I'm in Santa Teresa and like you know it's kind of like known as like the surf town or whatever like I'm on the coast but like Mm -hmm. it's for one thing it's hard when like someone you know most of the people speak a a different language that you don't speak like Spanish right but it's another thing like where I'm like I'm born and raised in Victoria and British Columbia right and like Mm. I have community there like I have a good amount of people that I know there and like I have roots there right and you know I truly believe that wherever we are right now like I don't know if you guys believe in the 144,000 prophecy you know light workers star seeds right but Mm -hmm. I truly believe that there's a reason why we've been placed where we have been placed in certain Mm -hmm. areas of the world is so we can anchor in these light codes horse Madison yeah yeah no, totally. And even when you're um, like, maybe like this was, this was exactly necessary to, to take you out of that environment so that you can like get really clear. And then 100%. now you can go back into that environment and like, start like, like, I feel like for men, like the most helpful thing is, is honestly to like have that space to come together and to be vulnerable with one another without, you know, needing to tend to their wives or their girlfriends or whatever because there there could be like so much pressure that's already put on on that male energy because you guys are like our protectors and and uh you guys like really like ground everything in and you guys build and and all this stuff and so for you to be in a different or like in that same environment where you've like grown up like I feel like that's um calling you for a reason to bring in people that are also waking up to this stuff but haven't had the opportunity to like step away and like get clear like they're just not probably coded um like you are like the one four (laughs) four yeah it's it's about like growing conscious community and like this is just I'm grateful for the experience I'm always grateful for every experience because it's always like it's not like why did this happen to me it's like what what can this teach me you know like in anything Mm -hmm. positives negatives right it's like what is this trying to teach me in the moment because source and god is always sending us a message in every experience that we encounter in life right so if anything this has been a big wake-up call and like even in our conversation like with the topics that we were talking about with like you know like veganism and like just like you know proper health and like care to self Mm -hmm. you know like it's just like now it's about creating like conscious community and it's all about truth, freedom, and health. That's really what it comes down to. Those three pillars, it's yeah. truth, freedom, and health, like sovereignty. Mm-hmm. It's like, we want the proper facts and, you know, we want to yeah. heal. And That's freedom, really like who knows when we're going to have to run away from the cities. So <laughs> it's like gathering yeah. that community now in that space to be able to grow something and build outside of that space. And when you're already in like a foreign country, kind of, makes it hard I always like thought about it too because I'm like oh it would be so nice to just like I was telling you it's like my dream is to move to Costa Rica and like start the community there um but I would obviously like to meet a few more people here that are like down for that that would want to go that's just it you want to have like a group of people like that's what I like you know going back home it's like I want to connect with a group of people and then if you know shit hits a fan so to speak in the future then you can take that group of people and then build because like Mm -hmm. you can only do so much as like one person or a couple people right but you're so much more powerful in numbers kate's been considering costa rica nicaragua belize oh yeah tropical paradise yes me too something about just like the warmth and even the humidity like I love the humid weather and just like the water. (laughs) I know, yeah, tropical fruit, just like being tan and wearing a bathing suit all the time. Like that's really just like what we were meant to do. (laughs) What are these careers and goals? And (laughs) 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 our our inner like child hippie self is just like, fuck this shit. Yeah. but yeah I really do believe it it will happen I mean if if shit hits a fan but even if it doesn't I feel like more of us are like finding each other online that will come together and then of course finding people in 
the real world too that think this way like there's more and more people waking up of course every day so we're not we're becoming like not as far spread out I think yeah. but in terms of like who can see really what is coming for us like I still think that there is still like the minority of us that see that <laughs> I think yeah there's definitely more than we know but like I also think like even in your name for example with like activation I think there's many people that are waiting to get activated so to speak mm, yeah and like they're just waiting for it like there's a certain resonance that they're trying to connect to and it's like yeah. we all carry a certain resonance right so it's about connecting with those that have alignment with the resonance or the field that we give off mm -hmm. yeah totally makes so much sense oh so exciting well this was amazing does anybody else have any questions or comments to share I think it's just us and Christina and Kay and Steph is still here too. <laughs> Cleo showing face. I know. She she Where felt she? the energy. Aww. She felt the energy for sure. Oh, oh yeah. She went behind my computer now. <laughs> oh great. Little cat. There's like some kittens by our house, and I'm just like excited to go on a walk just to visit them. <laughs> but that okay line energy i know right yeah the lions and yeah so let's just close out this container thank you guys so much once again for being here it's just so exciting to see all of your precious selves on here and to obviously come come together outside of social media even though zoom itself is kind of its own social media but you know without all the the distractions sometimes you open up instagram and it's like oh my gosh and yeah so having like a closed space for us to connect is super healing so i hope you guys all have a beautiful evening just let everything percolate through your field and if you guys ever have any questions i'm here for you of course you're so welcome kate Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Steph. Okay, Thanks, I will Joanna. let you guys go. You're so welcome. Enjoy your evening and we'll be in touch. Bye. Mm -hmm.